Okay, so today is Delfina's uh, turn. I see <clears throat> that there is also somebody from uh, the ministry again. Hello, welcome. Uh, and uh, so Delfina is going to talk about uh, her first uh, experiment, uh, you know, a work that she did in the last couple of months, I would say, or so, uh, and it's part of her uh, PhD, uh, her PhD program. Uh, she's at the, the beginning of her PhD. Uh, and this is a first experiment. Um, and uh, the idea is to, so the, the overall goal is to develop uh, a method that uh, is able to classify, let's say, images automatically based on the social concept that they evoke. And, uh, and these social concepts are, uh, examples are like uh, freedom, violence, these things that are not clearly defined, never explicitly defined, right? So it's something that we have in our common sense uh, in some way because they, they are social values, social concepts that we all share at least within a culture. Uh, and uh, so they are very hard, right, right, to recognize. The idea is that is to try and identify features that uh, uh, that can help making this automatic. Uh, uh, and uh, so she did the first experiment and she's going to tell us about what she did and uh, first some results. Uh, it's, I think we have more questions than, uh, than answers so far, but that's okay. And, uh, and, there, and she will also show uh, an initial, uh, you know, a model, uh, which is a draft, of course. Uh, also, everything is uh, is in a draft version at the moment. Um, it's a, it's an ongoing work, and um, and I think that there will be a lot of discussion on the model because I'm anticipating this because Aldo and I had a discussion like uh, in the evening after dinner on on Delfina's model. <laughs> so I think that probably this will come up at the end. Um, so Delfina, thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, I'll start the timer now. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you were able to give this general uh, kind of context for this work. Uh, I, in this presentation, I'll share with you um, the general landscape of my research. And as Valentina mentioned, some experiments and results which more than anything serve as proof of concept for the research project. So I will quickly introduce some of the motivations behind my work around social concepts and our images. And then I will present the general approach that I'm working towards, some experiments, some results, and discuss the lessons learned, the limitations, and where to go from here. So this research started out of my curiosity for how humans make sense of a rapidly changing world. Based on my bachelor's research, where I studied human social behavior from an evolutionary perspective, and my master's research, where I studied social interpretations and behavior around cultural artifacts, I became increasingly interested in the question of which tools humans use to communicate about an extremely variable and dynamic world. I agree with the sentiment intuited by Borges in this quote that in this making sense of the world, there is an aspect of forgetting, of generalizing and of abstracting. And as such, I began to ask myself, how do we generalize? What, what makes things, events, situations, similar beyond their immediately perceivable features. And I have a running hypothesis that part of the answer lies on the social concepts that these things, events, or situations evoke. Specifically on social concepts that refer to non-physical objects, such as disposal or excess or renewal, things that can be applied to multiple situations. 
So I intend social concepts in the ontological sense expounded by Masalo and colleagues, including Aldo, um, in 2003, where they write, reify and define social concepts um, as immaterial products of a community whose conventional constitution involves a network of relations among social agents. So that means that con I'm talking about concepts that depend on agents who by means of some sort of convention constitute, make use of and communicate about these concepts. So some of these here, I present some examples of the types of social content, concepts that my research is interested in, meaning that they don't map to a single concrete um, referent. Social concepts referring to non-physical objects are tools that are especially useful in describing the visual world especially or including visual art. This is because visual forms such as paintings and photographs are thought to illustrate and circulate concepts, both by providing links to depicted objects through raw features such as colors, lines, shapes, as well as through what Bart called an image's connotation, a second layer of meaning made from culturally coded elements. So for example, seeing Caravaggio's iconic painting, while a human observer would detect objects such as a face, a hand, or a sword, a comprehensive understanding would generally include a culturally coded concept such as violence. It then makes sense that the cultural heritage field has recognized these concepts as a resource to manage visual collections. For example, through the ample use of control thesauri, such as the Getty vocabularies or the art and architecture thesaurus, um, systems like icon class, uh, containing ready-made social concepts that are to be associated as subject matters of visual material. But with the ever-growing uh, collections of visual art data, the question raises, is there a way to detect some of these potential layers of meaning automatically? Of course, as Valentina already kind of um, present, intuited a little bit, this is very hard to do. Um, and this is one of the overarching goals of my research. It is quite a complicated task, even for humans, to uh, understand the mechanism through which this additional layer of meaning is added. This is not a straightforward thing. So to illustrate my point, I invite you to think about the images that I present here, which are all from the Tate. They all have been tagged with the same social concept. And I would like you to take a few seconds to look at them and if you're willing to share in the chat which social concept or concepts they evoke for you. Is there one that is evoked by many of them or by multiple of them? There are of course no wrong answers. But more than anything, I want you to, uh, I invite you to think about what exactly it is that is evoking these concepts. Is it the depicted objects? Is it the colors? Is it the color combinations? Are there the patterns of repetition? Is, is anyone writing on the chat? I'm not sure. Probably not. Let's see. No. Okay. So we can also discuss this um, later in the discussion. Can, can you guys see the screen again? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, these were all tagged with the concept of consumerism. Oh. And, yes. I heard something. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh I said consumerism in chat. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, that's great. So the most important point that I wanted to make here is that even if we were all to agree that consumerism is the a main social concept evoked by these images, the task of detecting why uh, these are evoked is not immediately straightforward, even for humans. So when we think about doing this automatically, a lot of questions come up. I think that the problem and the answer for these kind of concerns uh, are connected. 
So on one hand, part of the problem is that the concepts of interest are what cognitive science and neuroscience have called abstract concepts, meaning that the, the defining feature of these concepts is that they don't have a single concrete bounded object as a referent. Instead, they activate a variety of heterogeneous scenes and situations. While that makes computer vision efforts harder in, in a certain way, recent cognitive science literature also gives some hints towards an answer. These theories uh, post that sensory perceptual information is critical for abstract concepts too, even if they don't have a bounded direct, direct single reference. The theories posit that in addition to linguistic patterns, knowledge of abstract words is obtained through acquired embodiment whereby they become indirectly associated with perceptual features of co-occurring concrete words. So this is where my hypothesis comes in, which is that given that there are multiple potentially multimodal features that we humans use to guide our perception and judgment of what social concepts mean and when and where they are evoked, this may also be able to be done automatically. So the purpose of my current research is to model social concepts evoked by art images specifically in ways that combine and integrate such multimodality. Uh, as such, my hypothesis is that starting from a set of observations, in this case, image annotations, we can formulate a description of a social concept as a multimodal frame. These concepts, as also Valentina said in her introduction, um, are not explicitly defined, but we are hypothesizing that there is a common sense description that can be approximately derived from observing, for example, image annotations and their characteristics. Here you can see some examples of the kind of things I have in mind, color palettes, um, object detection, some action detection, uh, even visual patterns of repetition, which we see here, uh, and the idea is that we might not even be thinking of all the kinds of features that we could be extracting. So this is an overall um, approach that I wanted to present. My research uh, is aiming to automatically generate these formal multimodal representations of social concepts. And I hypothesize that they can be automatically produced with a pipeline that combines knowledge engineering computer vision and computational linguistics. And it focuses on the extraction, analysis, and integration of multimodal features from images to knowledge graphs. Specifically, at least in this, on this stage of the project, I'm interested in collecting depicted concrete or physical objects depicted, uh, depicted actions, and dominant colors. So an example would be the meaning of the social concept death may be described via a multimodal frame that integrates properties of images that evoke it. And this might include co-occurring objects such as coffin or old man, actions such as weeping or lying down or crying, and other sensory perceptual features, for example, uh, the color black as it may be a pervasive color in many, let's say, funeral scenes that evoke the social concept death. So as an empirical basis for the study, we use the Tate Gallery's collection of metadata uh, of 70,000 artworks that they made available as a GitHub repository in 2003. The repository is no longer actively maintained, but the Tate keeps it available as a useful tool for researchers and developers. And they look positively on creative remixing, visualization and analysis of their collection metadata. Perhaps the most uh, relevant and important part of this data set for my research was that it was so far the only one that is not only rich in size, but that it has a subject taxonomy, meaning that they tag the content of their artworks with a really wide variety of concepts that 
also include social concepts referring to non-physical objects. So they include tags. So for, for example, for vacuum cleaner or shoe, as well as they include tags such as consumerism or horror. Here's an example. This is one of the examples that has the most tags. Not all artworks have this level of tagging, but you can see that there is uh, an artwork, the um, tags that they have and the taxonomy within it. So we can see that they have a general, um, a general category of architecture. And then within that, we see that there's a, a hierarchy and they provide this data in JSON format. It's all available in the GitHub repository. Here's some of the social concepts that I find interesting and having already expert tagged um, images was a really nice place to start because it's, it is not that easy to find um, images tagged with these concepts in a systematic fashion. So I'll discuss some of the experiments and results. Um, I first uh, recreated the taxonomy in a way that allowed integration into our knowledge graph pipeline eventually. So for that, we developed an ontology, which I will discuss later. It's the, the conceptual model. Um, and it, it now allows the use and integration of concept schemes from different taxonomies, such as the Tay taxonomy. The point behind this was partly to be able to visualize the taxonomy. Um, and we found that it has three hierarchical levels, levels zero, one, and two, going from the broadest to the narrowest. So for example, there's the broad, the broadest um, level of emotion concepts and ideas, which has a child universal concept, concepts and a grandchild fertility. Um, when, I, when I was able to visualize this taxonomy, I manually examined it for identifying the areas where social concepts might be more pervasive. And I identified three uh, micro areas of interest. Here you can see them. The first is this emotion concepts and ideas, and especially the universal concepts and the emotions areas. Then uh, the social comment area, which is a child of society. This one also had quite a few interesting social concepts. And then finally, religion and belief. Um, here in this table, you can see some examples um, of the kinds of tags slash concepts on each of the le levels. So this is the most general level, objects, nature, people, society. And then you can see that as it goes um, into the higher number um, levels, it gets a little bit more narrow in meaning. So there were, um, I mostly did uh, just I manipulated the JSON files with Python to further understand the number of artworks matched uh, or tagged with each of the concepts that I chose. Uh, I didn't mention it, but I chose 166 concepts to start with. Um, and then I ran some analyses to collect co-occurring uh, objects and actions. Basically what I did was I uh, collected all co-occurring tags, and then I did further analyses to understand um, which of these tags may be referring to physical objects and which may be referring to actions. So uh, there's even more work that can be done with the tags that were not included in either one of these categories. Uh, here you can see some of the numbers, the results. Um, that the, the number of Tate artworks explicitly tagged with each of these concepts of the, each of the 166 concepts ranged from 368, this is the one with the highest uh, number of matches, to one with an average of 48. You will be seeing uh, horror and consumerism in the results. 
because I chose them as case studies. I chose them sort of randomly, sort of because of the intuition that they would show different color profiles and potentially different uh, profiles in each of the kind of structures that I'm investigating. So you can see um, here the, the averages and medians for each of these um, results. So this is the number of artwork matches for each concept. This is the number of co-occurring physical objects, the number of co-occurring actions. And then this is the average frequency of the top 10, um, the, free, the average frequency of co-occurrence of the top objects for each um, concept. So for example, the top 10 objects that co-occur with death appeared in uh, an average of 71 artworks out of 368. So you can see that the frequencies are not really that high. Here is um, this, the, the top 10 co-occurring objects and actions for the, the four uh, social concepts that I, I had on the previous table. Uh, we can see that there's some that are pretty repetitive, but that there's some interesting already uh, results here. We see that there's religious and ceremonial, clothing, weapons, sea, whereas for something like consumerism, there's uh, furnishings, food and drink, appliances, kitchen. Of course, we can already see here that definitely more work is needed in being able to differentiate which are physical objects, what we even mean by physical object, because for example, domestic is something that we would probably, or at least I would probably consider more of an abstract concept than concrete. So further work is needed because here all three levels of the hierarchy are included. And this might be describing domestic objects um, instead of just being domestic. Uh, also with the actions here, we get some interesting results, horror, recoiling, uh, screaming, hands raised. Uh, well, consumerism has smiling as the first one, um, which kind of, at least in my perspective, it kind of matches common sense or my own sense of what, would I, what I would expect. Finally, I did a uh, dominant color analysis. So this was, also, this was done only on the consumerism and the horror artworks. I randomly selected 30 images uh, from the Tate that were tagged with them, specifically of paintings and prints. And I did a, a dominant color analysis where I extracted the top five uh, dominant colors and the how how the percent percentage in which they're used. And then I did um, a further uh, transformation by making them into proportional color palettes so that it would be more intuitive to understand. Uh, yeah, the dominant color features. So just to discuss these a little bit more, um, I think, first of all, I included these also more intuitive representations. So on top, you can see the um, co-occurring physical objects and separated by a line, the actions. And the bigger the text, the larger the text, the more, the higher frequency of co-occurring, co-occurrence with that uh, social concept. And a manual examination of these uh, suggests that there is some uh, regularity in the physical objects and actions that most frequently co-occur. And most of these co-occurrences seem to agree with intuition. So for example, consumer, consumerism co-occurring with appliances, kitchen, perhaps even woman, right? Like what that says about our conception of consumerism, packaging, um, drink. Whereas on the other hand, having horror uh, co-occurring with monster or skull or uh, weapons. Same for the actions. I, I find the actions very interesting personally. Um, 
smiling, sitting, standing for consumerism, with horror having uh, this, this is coming from hands raised. So having raised hands, recoiling, screaming. These are all kind of things that we would think, um, you know, but it, uh, this uh, perspective uh, and this approach kind of allows to automatically extract these and see if they match what we would expect. Um, so here, for example, I, I find I found it interesting to see these results because it made me realize that these were partly the things that made me think of consumerism. There are things that are definitely missing here. So for example, Colombia with the sea of Coca-Cola, right? The, the brand typography or the repeti repetition used here and here. These are things that are not caught yet. And I'm definitely sure we there's gonna be many, many more ideas of what other features could be interesting. But there is something there, same here. Uh, in this one, I hadn't realized that, for example, hands raised was something that actually a lot of the horror tagged images had. So we have here, 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 and here. I'm not sure, I don't think in this one. But it, it is very interesting to see how kind of these features are a representation, definitely a very simplistic representation, but they do uh, represent on some level the, the shared features of these images. So some limitations uh, are that the images used in the experiments were not as distinguished by type of artwork medium, um, that I also didn't disambiguate the terms. So we definitely expect that much improvement can be um, access just by expanding terminology, disambiguating and leveraging less equal resources. And most obviously is that this experiment was, experiment was limited to the Tate uh, collection, which is a biased and expert curated data set. Meaning that even though the, date, the Tate data set provided us with a clean and annotated corpus, uh, it encompasses a limited geographic, historical, and cultural perspective. And the fact that it is, it is expert tagged might result in a biased interpretation and classification of the artworks, which might differ from the interpretations of a larger, larger and more diverse group of viewers, uh, diverse in every single way, not only in terms of education. But there are some general kind of takeaway points is um, one is that these three areas that I identified in the taxonomy. You have five minutes, Delfina, just to tell you. You can take even a few minutes more, don't worry, but uh, I wanted to let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, so the, the three major areas kind of also resemble some subtypes of abstract concepts. Um, meaning emotional concepts, social concepts, and moral ethical concepts. I'm talking about the, the areas meaning emotions, uh, society, and religion. And, you know, this, this may be self-fulfilling bias, or most likely is, but at least it can be a starting point for investigation of other catalogs and, and data sets in their taxonomies. Also with this work, I hope to start a, a social concept image corpus that, um, gives empirical proof that these concepts are being used to manage visual data and that there is availability of data for more analyses. And hopefully this corpus can in the future be used for a variety uh, of tasks and, and as a research resource for a variety of disciplines. Third, <coughs> that it is possible to develop computational techniques that mirror the idea of acquired embodiment so we can identify certain perceptual features of concrete co-occurring um, objects or words for these kind of higher, higher level abstract social concepts. Of course, as already mentioned, further research is needed in most aspects, including for the low frequencies. Uh, as, as I was saying before, more than anything, it's a proof of concept of some regularity and that it is a promising future uh, direction of research. I wanted to finish by 
talking a bit about the model that we're uh, working on. So I called it MUSCO, meaning multimodal descriptions of social concepts. It is based on the descriptions and situations pattern in a modular way. So this is the pattern up here. And it's a, it's a modular use of the, of the pattern to basically we, we see the, the, the image annotation process as a situation that needs to be described and that represents the state of affairs of all data related to an image including actual multimedia data as well as metadata. Um, and the three complex structures to be annotated that we identified, meaning dominant colors, depicted physical objects and depicted actions um, are defined by individual descriptions that together make up a general description of the image annotation uh, process. Um, as Valentina said, this model is definitely uh, under review as it's a process of revision, editing, but so far it um, provides the entities, resources, and relationships necessary to integrate the outputs from the experiments that I have performed. Uh, here you can see some attempts, initial attempts as, uh, at using this model. Um, for describing the, the kind of, uh, describing and integrating um, all of this multimodal data so that we can hopefully uh, use them to define social concepts, to describe social concepts, and then be able to use this for a variety of tasks in the future. Uh, so some of the many further directions is to populate uh, the knowledge graph with the developed ontology and with all of the extracted data. Uh, as I mentioned before, the disambiguating the terms, leveraging lexical resources. Um, another, I think, interesting part of this is that because I thought of the of, of MUSCO as a modular infrastructure, this would allow for the expansion of, of types of integrated data in the sense that we can potentially include, you know, for example, co-occurring social concepts because there's tags that we didn't include as we only included physical objects and actions. There's also other visual patterns that could be um, connected, even other senses like sound. For example, let's say we find that thunder, the sound of thunder uh, evokes um, anger. We could connect that to the, um, the multimodal frame for anger. We could also even do facial recognition analysis on the images and put other distributional semantics information. Uh, there's a few more things that could be done, like refining the initial social concepts list and enlarging, diversifying the art image corpus. But overall, um, our method is imposed by the idea that a knowledge graph containing this kind of multi -multi multimodal data for social concept description can serve as an input to, for example, a learning model that can automatically detect social concepts in images. And this would lead, could lead to a, many breakthroughs, breakthroughs in many areas, uh, like improving multimedia querying, uh, improving detection of potential images to communicate social concept, concepts, which can be used for, with public institutions, in building narratives about their objects, engaging citizens, uh, can enhance visual collections, documentation and mediation, um, and even companies in the creative sector. Overall, I hope that with the model and the approach that I'm proposing, uh, more interesting results will come up. Uh, and I look forward to your thoughts. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Delfina. Uh, we actually have already one uh, hand raised. So, Bruno. Very nice, Delfina, thanks. You have also Valentina with the... <laughs> it started like a TED talk, so congratulations. <laughs> uh, Bruno, go ahead. Hi, hi Delfina. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. It was great. Uh, I have a few questions uh, about your analysis of the data. 
So I have seen that you have taken a look at the co-occurrence frequency of um, these types of uh, may they be physical or abstract ideas or actions. And since I have last year I've done something really similar about co-occurrences. So uh, I have a suggestion actually, uh, rather than look for, I mean, I, maybe you already thought of that and uh, this is just uh, an initial work. So I understand that these things, but maybe you also, you don't want to look at only frequency of turns, but you might want to create like a, a vector space model so that you may have discriminating power. So maybe uh, rather than counting the frequency of terms, you can see that uh, some terms are more frequent only on that kind of uh, um, concept that you have in mind. So that might be another way to uh, to see what comes up, if, if it is different or if it is the same. And yeah, yeah. I was I, just wondering if you thought about this. Yeah, that's definitely another uh, further step I was thinking was exactly that, you know, in, in the images of the of the word clouds, like the, the intuition of, okay, recoiling might be an action that is more specific to this concept than standing, uh, that I think definitely uh, I'll look into the vector space model. We should talk more. So maybe you can help me think about how to go, go for it. Thank you. We, we have actually talked. Uh, the, this is uh, related to this uh, with Delfina. We had, uh, of course, discussions around this. And uh, and yes, this is this is an, you know the first uh, study that she did, uh, and we thought about doing embeddings. And actually, we had this idea of uh, trying uh, uh, also to do uh, palette embeddings, so embeddings of palettes of colors, which I I'm, I think it's uh, it would be really also new <laughs> new thing. And uh, and I think it, we, we should try and and of course also with the, with the terms of course you want to do something more sophisticated than that we didn't even de um, disambiguate it was really just to as she said like having a proof of concept that the direction is uh, makes sense no but uh, you're uh, certainly right Bruno uh, Michel if you have questions all of you are comments, anything, so uh, as you know, so this is, uh, Delfina is, uh, is uh, at uh, her first year of PhD, so anything for her is useful, discussion, comments, ideas, uh, criticism, anything, okay, so don't be, so be generous, <laughs> especially the seniors. Uh, Misa, please go ahead. Um, thank you, thank you very much, Delphine. It was very interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting work. Um, my question is a little bit related to to, to the one uh, Bruno. Um, I wonder if you have thought about uh, uh, trying to extract the the relation between physical objects and uh, social concepts. Uh, from language models or something like that. Uh, I mean, uh, in in the language, in, in the document that you have on on the web, uh, often maybe you can find this association, no? because uh, um, I don't know, when people talk about something, uh, talk about some some concepts, and then they talk about some social concept, or some, uh, I don't know, some emotion uh, and so on. So maybe this can help to, to use this association, maybe uh, like e extracting the object from the image and then use some knowledge that come from language models to, uh, to predict the, the social, a concept. I wonder if you have explored this uh, this idea, and what do you think about it? I I haven't yet done it, but I I've been thinking about it, and I think um, so far most of the the cognitive science literature I read has generally focused on you know the more distributional semantics um, aspect of you know I think that could be mirrored with the language models of what are co-occurring words, so for example, accident and death. 
um, and including of physical objects like coffin. Uh, and I definitely know I, I should, and I'm excited to to use these models. And I think it, I'm not sure how to yet really put together these things, but I think there's a very interesting question that I don't even know what the question is, but in thinking about the kind of physical objects that are co-occur with social concepts in the linguistic area, and then which ones co-occur in images, and if there are differences, you know, uh, what what those differences are, which ones are co-occurring in a more conceptual level, which ones co-occur in a more sensory level. So I'll definitely keep in mind that this is the this is a, a good chunk of, of a source of information. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Andrea. Hi Delfina. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a bit of delay with my connection, which is not really excellent. So probably you already uh, said something about what I'm asking, but I uh, joined the, the seminar with a bit of delay. So um, I hope you uh, can be uh, you know, fair with me if I ask something which is not really uh, intelligent somehow. So uh, my, my, my question is uh, the following. Um, you have a number of uh, analyses on the occurrence of things that can be a variety of things. Uh, but uh, what I don't really get is what, what, what kind of knowledge or information you would like to, to gather by analyzing the occurrence on, you know, on, on keywords or actions or any other things that can be represented in artworks and visual images. Um, I think the key here is this concept of acquired embodiment, which is coming from cognitive neuroscience, which is the idea that uh, these it, it comes from a definition of abstract concepts more than social concepts. Uh, but the idea is that uh, with acquired embodiment, these abstract concepts that don't have a single bounded object as a referent, become associated with perceptual features of co-occurring concrete words. So the kind of knowledge that I would like to get is like, for example, what is the acquired embodiment? What is the general acquired embodiment of violence? What is, what is the color of violence? I mean, I think this is also because I, I, I paint and I like to do art and on the back of my mind, I'm always like, how am I gonna use this to make cool art projects, right? But thinking of what is the color of violence? What are the objects of violence? You know, in, in certain, of course, these are limited to the data that is analyzed. So what is the Tate Gallery's vision of violence? Does it include uh, a certain type of person? Does it include many types of person? I think the kind of knowledge is the kind of knowledge, sorry, the kind of knowledge that can be extracted and that we can learn is the kind of knowledge that is more of a, a humanities and social uh, a resource for it for more social fields, perhaps. Uh, I think you're muted. Yeah, I'm muted. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can also have social objects that occur uh, in in artworks or images. So it means that if I got it correctly, you can also have multiple representations for different uh, mm -hmm. social objects that were co occur And somehow it will be also interesting what are the relations among social objects, if any exist, and yeah. uh, what is the semantics of those, rela of those relations uh, or all these kind of things. So, yeah, it's a sort of multi-contextual <laughs> representation of knowledge or, or frame. I don't know if uh, maybe yeah. I'll do. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is very interesting. And perhaps one cool thing that could come from this research, if it goes that way, is through these multimodal representations, kind of understanding a little bit better a taxonomy of social concepts. Because we might see, oh, you know, I don't know, violence and, and horror and isolation are all related to each other in certain ways. You know, what are the ways that these concepts relate to each other more than simply because they, um, I don't know, 
have the same co-occurring word always, you know? But, but yes, I think that it's very interesting to think of the relationships between the concepts themselves. Thank you. Ando? Uh, okay, so firstly, thanks, uh, Delfina. Really nice presentation, very clear, well organized, and uh, quite a model of, of a good presentation. Also, the, 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 the general idea and the experiment you did is pretty cool. And I invite you to write down a, a report to be published on Archive, for example, so that we can. Uh, um, we can uh, get citations for it and <laughs> and uh, be able to quote it. Uh, that is definitely cool. Um, so, by the way, I wanted to ask you something at the beginning about the, the fact we could, for example, uh, disambiguate the uh, the terms from the Tate Gallery. But then you say that indeed you didn't do it because you uh, by now. So <laughs> uh, this is something you could do. Um, and there is some uh, something that Rock also has shared that comes from the very prolific group of uh, uh, Roberto Navillis and Lata Sapienza. They did some, uh, some uh, already some uh, association between ImageNet and, uh, and uh, BubbleNet so that they have um, some disambiguation that could be used also for abstract concepts possibly. Um, and, and then also invite you to, uh, because your, your use case actually is pretty interesting for the kind of uh, social concepts we are investigating in the SPICE project. Um, I don't know if you already joined some of the sessions of that uh, project, but probably um, this might be pretty useful on the, on, uh, as, a, um, as an example of what we could do in terms of multimodal uh, detection in the, in the experience of, for example, of people within museums. Uh, so we'll probably invite you to, to, to discuss something in that. Yeah, Sofia is uh, saying that you are actually involved in WP5, but this the kind of Thing that she did is uh, um, a bit more related to what we are doing in WP6. <laughs> uh, this is about you know, providing semantics, integrated semantics to multiple uh, modalities, um, and uh, eventually relating this to the, the kind of social concepts that are activated, evoked within uh, visitors and um, people. So, going from values to uh, emotions, that's it. Um, so, yeah, no, basically, this is what I want just to. to, to to make the point about that. And uh, uh, I, I actually signed something that I can't even read anymore because uh, <laughs> I wrote it really quickly. Uh, by the way, it, probably it was something about your notion of social concept that you are um, that you grabbed uh, as a possible uh, mapping to form ontology of the notion of abstract object in the cognitive science literature, which is a, a bit misleading when you try to, to, uh, to put together the two areas, and probably you may want to look at the variety of uh, different things that you uh, encounter within this notion of social concept. This is something you probably have already thought about. And um, by the way, this is really um, important in order to, in, um, to have a finer grained um, analysis of what you're um, uh, putting there. No? For example, uh, beauty is a kind of different thing from uh, that, from uh, some notion of uh, some, something different, like an emotion, okay? It, what is the actual nature of that? You know? So how we can really um, recognize these social concepts, that, where are they grounded, no? For example, are they grounded in feelings or are they grounded in uh, words or in uh, sort of uh, open textured concepts that are uh, all around without a specific mention? No? This is something we are also studying elsewhere. And um, I guess that this could lead you to, to have a final green analysis in that. By the way, thank you again. Very, very nice work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the where are they grounded is, is I think, a, a key question. And it's kind of what I was just talking about with, with Andrea. Um, because it's, it's this question of, you know, trying to see how these concepts are grounded at least in the context of art images, in the context of the Tate Gallery, and getting kind of these clues of how they're grounded differently. So if we were able to eventually do a, a different kind of analysis and a different corpora of text or of sounds or music, we could see how these concepts may be grounded by very different things, depending on the context, which kind of mirrors the cognitive uh, science. So 
I will have that as, as, as a, the running question or a running question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Stefano, you had the, your raise hand, but then I don't see it anymore. So you changed your mind or do you have a question? No, no, no worries. I was kind of answered meanwhile. So okay. Thank you, Delfina. The presentation was very, very uh, beautiful. Thank you. Is there any other question or comment for Delfina? So I think that what uh, Luca, yes, please. Hi. Welcome. Uh, thank you a lot because um, I come from a different background. I am a researcher at the Cognitive Science Institute and I work more on the abstract concept from the perspective of cognitive science. So I was interested in this uh, different uh, approach. And um, I, I mean, I'd like to know more. So if uh, you have more, some more um, stuff that we can read, we can discuss together also with Anna Borghi that we work on this topic for, and you, you, you quote one of our papers, so it's, it would be nice uh, to collaborate with this. But uh, just a very simple question for now, because uh, uh, so uh, you focused on um, objects that may be uh, associated with abstract or social concept, as you say, and action. And a very simple observation is that a pretty standard idea uh, is that uh, abstract concepts in general are uh, more uh, grounded in situation and more relational kind of knowledge. So I wonder whether you can extend your taxonomy to consider not, I mean, uh, uh, object in the image, but situation, which is already an abstract uh, feature. Right, so it's it's a, a problem per se. But uh, I wonder whether you have this middle layer of abstraction to to uh, automatically uh, recognize such a concept, at least at the level of situation, and uh, uh, or e even uh, uh, mental state. It's another uh, property of abstract concept that is recurringly proposed as particularly salient. So yeah, of course you can you don't have a um, a perceptual feature that you can use to recognize directly uh, uh, internal state, but this is what makes abstract concept difficult. So, mm -hmm. yeah, actually, it's it's very interesting because when I first started, when I first wrote basically my PhD proposal, it was all about detecting uh, the relationships in images. And my hypothesis, my running hypothesis was that by detecting relationships, that might give much more of the needed knowledge to think of what might be evoked. So that, that was the underground. And that's definitely what I'm trying to put together now. Uh, that's why I was originally thinking, and hopefully I'll do this soon. Uh, there's a lot of computer vision work on scene graphs which not only detect the objects, but detect the, the relationships between them. So, you know, person petting a dog, uh, holding a cup. And that's definitely, I think the actions uh, aspect of what I did was my first step in trying to get to more of those relational, of depicted relationships, which as you said, is already an abstraction. So it is harder, um, but, but yes, I am very aware of, the power of, of relationships and abstract concepts kind of more as like a schema of relationships of an agent hurting another agent might evoke violence, regardless of who the agents are and what the weapon is and all of that. So thank you. And, and yeah, it sounds great to, to talk in the future and, and, and get to know more uh, about your work. That would be great. Okay, any other comment or question? Okay, so I think Delfina that uh, many of these things will uh, certainly drive our next discussions. And uh, with that, though, we already said, okay, we have to go through the model a little bit uh, more in depth. So we'll uh, certainly look into what, uh, you know, the, the draft that is there, which is not bad, by the way, 
But there are a few points where uh, there are interesting uh, reflections to make and make sure that we represent, uh, you know, the relations between all these uh, uh, involved entities uh, at the best. And uh, yeah, by the way, nice talk. Thank you all. If there are no other questions or comments, uh, so we can uh, adjourn the, the meeting and uh, to next week we will have another uh, seminar. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. 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 Thanks, everyone.